Um, it started, it definitely started smaller. We had, um, on another floor in this building, we had a newsroom that was probably about about a fifth this size with, with maybe nine TVs on the wall. And it was like a classic um, kind of 20 dudes right. in one room, smelled terrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, just kind of kind of doing doing their thing. Right. And uh, this, this so is the next iteration. Deal now, right? It's just like I was reading on, on your website that you're doing 60 million uniques. You're like the second biggest website for sports. Like it's, it seems like you're like you're a very established, you know, media property in a lot of different ways. Right? Yeah. Well, so so we we started out as as you know as a as a web publishing business and have really built our brand off of a website and then um, created a very successful app that's the most used sports app in the United States. And yeah, we've been the second largest sports website for a long time. A couple of years ago, though, we um, really decided that we really in the, the business of building a brand and, um, and certainly uh, having a website and having an app are, are part of our business. Um, but our, our business is, is more focused on um, on creating great content and great experiences for sports fans, regardless of where they are. So, you know, for example, today um, we now uh, we now reach well over 200 million people a month across all platforms. So, our, so our website and our app are are a good chunk of that. But um, but so is Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat and Twitter and other platforms. And so, in a lot of ways, we look at. Um, we look at those platforms as really the new MSOs, right. like they're the new cable operators. Whereas, um, you know, if you look at a, a Dish or a Comcast or a DirecTV and so on and so forth. Our job is really on those those platforms to build the next great channels. Right. And so, one of the tricky parts is if TBS uh, has a, a distribution deal with you know, with Dish or, or with Comcast or Cox or whoever, TBS is, it's the same on every one of those channels right. versus kind of the modern platforms. Right. They all have different rules. Right. They all have different audiences as well. So we really treat them as their kind of, as their own magazine, as their own, like we're, we are, we're very much trying to build a customized experience that's right for that audience. Um, so it's just the, the rules of the game and media have right. changed a, a lot, but we think we're on the forefront a lot of a lot of the most important trends as well. Yeah. It's kind of funny, right? Because you you know you look at kind of yeah the, the kind of challenge you deal with right now, the kind of scale you deal with, and you look at like well you know starting from what was it like you guys got started in like two thousand seven or something like that? Yeah, we started working started working on this part time in two thousand five, full time in two thousand and seven. And so it's kind of like you know beyond the the narrative of like oh look at what they achieved in like you know ten eleven years. Yeah. Uh, you know there's been a lot of uh, different things happening, a different kind of transition with the company, and the one that I was particularly interested about was like. I guess a personal transition of like what you went through, like being a founder, you know, hiring an external CEO, yeah. you know, leaving the company, and then very recently like coming back as CEO to run Bleacher Report again, yeah. and, and that's kind of a, a you know something that goes beyond the like uh, you know super uh, Disney narrative of like everything works out and everything has always worked out and the company was always doing well, and kind of hints at something I think a lot of startups go through in terms of you know how do you help your own company, how do you manage your own company, and 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 how to navigate that. So that's something I really wanted to dive into. So you know I don't know what makes most but I guess you know you started as founders, and, and at some point you know you you were growing up, and you realized you had to grow up a different way. Is that pretty much what led you to to kind of do those different transitions? Yeah. So our our initial founding team, um, basically uh, uh, four friends from high school, and I, I think with most first time founders, when you start a company, um, you have a you have a vision, and you have um, big hopes and, and dreams. Um, but you usually have no idea what the hell you're doing at right. the at the same time, and we have some some observations about the sports space and about content that ended up being um, being mostly right at some at some levels, and uh, and we hired amazing people along along the way and had this incredible journey. But when we were when we were getting going, I don't think any of us could have told you exactly what we were good at or um, how each of us independently would grow. Um, when you're first, you, just, you just don't know who's going to end up adding value in this area or that area or at all. And so as, as we got off the ground and started to figure things out and figured out our model, we did hit a point in time um, where we realized that we were in the sports media business. And when we got going, we, we wanted to be in sports, but we weren't quite sure if we were in the media business or if we were in the platform business. Right. We dabbled for a while at creating something that would have been more like a Tumblr for sports. So we decided we were in the sports media business, which is 
um, it's a it's an entrenched um, kind of like old boys network in right. certain ways. It's relationship driven. It's an advertising business, and and we realized that we had a lot to learn, and I guess also decided at some point it was for the the three founders that were were still involved with the, with the business. Uh, that it was kind of better to, you know, the expression is better to be rich than, than king. Um, in our case, we, we just really believed in the, the value proposition of what we were trying to build and wanted to do everything in our power to, uh, to raise more money, to invest more money in content and product and build something that would be lasting and, and meaningful. So, and that was why we, uh, we went the external CEO route and we, um, we hired a great one in Brian Gray was, and he was with the company for um, for something like three or three and a half years, and led us through an acquisition. Um, and you know, I personally learned a, a ton right. from from Brian. And I think overall, looking back, it was just a great experience to um, to just put ourselves in a position. My other two co-founders are now CEOs of of other media companies, where uh, we were just able to. Um, to maintain kind of a really steep uh, kind of growth and learning curve the entire time. Yeah, and so both for the company and for yourselves, like yeah. you know, individually. And so eventually, you know, um, you know, you decided to to move on, right, and, and yeah. do something else and scratch scratch that itch, right, of be, you know doing your own thing in a yeah. different way, right. Yeah. And so, what kind of led you to kind of you know move that? Because a lot of people feel like you know their company, especially their first company, it's like their baby, and that can be yeah. really hard. And do you feel like you know did you feel like you you left too early now that you're back, or do you feel like you left too late relatively, you know, compared to what you could learn yeah. on the outside? Like, how do you think that that was? So, I mean, first and foremost, you know. I've been, been very been very fortunate, and the whole experience has been kind of beyond my wildest dreams. Um, I, so when when Brian left, I ran the business for uh, maybe a year and a half, something like that. And, um, and throughout that period, though, I was fairly transparent with um, with the the company Time Warner that, that that owns Bleacher Report that I wanted to take some time off. Um, I th throughout as as we all do. Um, throughout the entire experience, as, as wonderful as it as it was, um, I always knew that I wanted to spend some time traveling. And I got married at at some point along the line, and that was kind of like my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Um, I I always wanted to get out there and explore different parts of um, of the world and just uh, and just attach a right. little bit. Because so, it's very intense, right? It's kind of like it's this this like. When you're doing a startup, especially the founder, like you're working all the time, yeah. and it's like it's a long time to be working all the time. Yeah, no, it was a it was a nine and a half year journey for me until I um, until I I stepped away for a little while, and yeah, it's on. I mean, unless you go through it, I think you know you can never really understand the emotional toll right. that it takes or how how um, how hard we worked for so many years. Um, the you know the wake up at 7 a.m. and start working and you go to bed at 1 in the morning just because you realize you need to get some sleep to do it again the next day. And it's, and it's in your head all the time, too, even when you're not working. Totally. <laughs> yeah, there's a, it's like you never really take a, take a day off. Um, and, and overall, it's a great experience, but at some point, you know, you have to just recognize that right. you need to take a step back and, um, and clear your head and evaluate what you want to do with right. your life. So I, I was able to do that. And um, and I actually started working on another startup project um, during um, I raised a little bit of, of money and, and Bleach Report's former CTO and I started working on something totally different from media and uh, and then kind of about a year into it uh, Turner decided that they wanted to make a much bigger bet on Bleach Report mm -hmm. and um, and to be candid when I when I left. Um, Bleach Report was doing extremely well, um, but um, I certainly felt that in order to take the business to the next level, it was going to require a significant capital investment. Right. Um, content businesses are expensive, the landscape is moving really quickly, and, uh, and Turner decided that Bleach Report was a brand that right. could be a really big part of the future of their business. And, um, and so it was just really exciting to me to, and it was, you know, later came out publicly that Turner invested $100 million in Bleacher Report, um, which is, is enough, uh, enough cash for us to go do some really, really interesting things. And, and again, I mentioned you know, the difference between kind of like a website and living in the web world, and, and now we're, we're thinking of ourselves as, as, a, as a big media brand, as a, as a brand that has a chance to, um, to have a lasting cultural legacy um, in the United States and perhaps out of it. 
and that opportunity certainly for me and for the company was was kind of too good to be true and I really wanted to be be a part of it. But to be clear, it also seemed like it's not just money, right? I mean, to get that kind of footprint and that kind of impact and that kind of renewal in, in a company like Bleacher Report, you know, also need like the creativity and the passion and the drive, right? And that also makes sense that, you know, beyond just adding a bunch of cash, that Turner would want to add like talent and, and you know, some of the, that founder spirit back into the company. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's not just me. Um, there are uh, there are a number of senior folks here that have been here for a really, really long time that, uh, that have been the drivers and the catalysts of so much of the growth here. And I, th I think one of the reasons we've been so successful is it's just a great team. Um, we have really great, t like I've played team sports my entire life. This is the best team I've ever played on from a chemistry standpoint. We're like a family. Um, I could give all sorts of other cliche terms, um, but it just clicks and there are there are people here who could probably go elsewhere and start their own companies or get paid more money um, but we kind of we're kind of idealists and we like working together and we think we have a chance to build something in kind of the sports and culture fabric um, that really will matter that we'll be proud of for the rest of our lives and I think we there's just there's nothing I think when I stepped away I realized there's nothing I would rather do uh, than be a part of this team trying to work on that. Uh, so it was pretty cool to come to that conclusion for me personally. Yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And so, you know, um, do you feel like that time away like helped you? Like beyond like just, you know, helping you like just reset and have some vacation and explore it. Like, yeah. you, you, you were talking about growing a learning curve. Do you feel like taking time away from your baby actually helped you like, you know, still grow and learn more? Yeah, it absolutely did. I think anytime you're able to take, uh, to take a step back you can see things, maybe not with unbiased eyes, like I'm always gonna be very biased um, to some extent about Bleacher Board and its position in the marketplace, but, um, but I was able to see just the overall landscape, um, I think in, in a broader way, and just spend more time thinking about bigger picture issues and where things are going, and you, you inevitably, if you're living and breathing, uh, all the little details that go into running a company on a day-to-day -day basis, these things that can seem very, very important that maybe aren't so important to your success over a two or five or 10 year period. And also I think getting away sometimes makes it easier to be creative, yeah. to be honest. Um, it's not often that my best creative ideas take place when I'm in my office. After they, a 12 hour day. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> they, they, they can take place um, in all kinds of walks of life or in it, when you're, I think anytime you're inspired in one area of life, even if it has nothing to do um, with your job, like if you're just, you're feeling inspired and motivated and, um, and are just looking at the world in an optimistic way, then I think it gives you an opportunity to um, maybe come up with something great for, that pertains to your, your job. Yeah, so, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. So one of the big insights that we found in our journey is defining diversity, um, it ends up being something where you have to talk about difference. You have to be able to have language and toolkits to talk about what makes people different from another, how you define strengths and weaknesses, um, how you actually align resources towards work to be done. Um, and it's, it's really something where I think the conversation about right. diversity, it almost like gets in the way sometimes of actually talking about the differences between people.